Do you know which song that is, baby? Mm-hmm. What? Which song? I want you to guess. No, you guess. It's the Amelie song. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you know. <laughs> Are you feeling better? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. And today we're going to be making sense of life through... Amelie. And it follows. It follows. Amelie. Amelie Poulain. As she goes through life, it starts off showing her, well, be, being born into the Poulain family. And then when she's a young kid, uh, explains kind of her early childhood um, where she was homeschooled. Isolated because from her peers. What was it? They, uh, really? her, her dad, who was a doctor, believed that she, so she didn't get much physical uh, connection with her dad. So when he, she, the few times she would is when she'd go to the, cause he was a doctor. So he'd do checkups on her. Yeah. So she'd get very excited. So her heart would race. So every time, so he thought she had a heart condition. Yeah. But that, that's only because she would get excited for the one time yeah. that her dad held her. Yeah. yeah. Not even held. He just wasn't got even, close to her. Yeah, just, just like got close to her. Contact. Yeah. Physical yeah. contact, which yeah. she was longing for. Right. Yeah. And so because of that, they, sh they think she's sick. And so they pull her out of school mm -hmm. and she doesn't have any friends. She doesn't. She just grows up very lonely. Mm -hmm. Because also her parents were very secluded Socially, people. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Isolated. Yeah. And then she just basically develops a very imaginative mm -hmm. um, way of living. Like mm -hmm. she lives in her head. Yeah. And she has a very kind of like fantasy type of existence. Yeah. 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 Which I think they kind of get through with how they film it. It's all very much like a kind of very fantasy and very like. You know, there's all there's always like um, inanimate objects moving around yeah. and talking to her. And yeah. They kind of they kind of try and put you in her mind and yeah. how it's all one big fantasy. Yeah. Her mother dies after a woman jumps off the top of a church. <laughs> and so she's raised by her father, who gets more and more isolated. But because she is someone that has found a way to always entertain herself, um, but she's surrounded by a lot of people that uh, are very. You know, lonely. very gloom, gloomy, lonely, jaded, beaten down by life. But yeah, it, it follows her day to day, all the characters that she interacts with, people that live in her apartment, people that she gets groceries from, people, people that, that she works, she works with, with, and the, who the are regulars. Also yeah. Jaded and yeah. lonely. Yeah. So it's just a, basically a movie of a bunch of lonely people mm -hmm. who are brought together by geography, really. Mm -hmm. So that's that's basically, that's and basically. then she then there's a there's a. A romance that brews but it's not even actually necessarily like a main it's yeah. kind of more near the I end mean, of the movie so the main thing like the, the yeah. movie is really just about uh amelie mm -hmm. trying to make other people happy yeah she, right? she discovers the joys that you can get from turning someone's life around or giving joy to other people yeah so that becomes her her, her motivation thing. in life yeah. her purpose yeah so yeah. she's watching the news and then mm -hmm. they're announcing that lady died diana has passed away and then she drops something and it's opens this part of her, her mm -hmm. floor that she didn't know existed and then she finds this box yeah. with a whole bunch of old trinkets and yeah toys. that belong to and she discovers that it belonged to a kid mm -hmm. who lived there 40 years ago she sets out to find yeah. this kid and says if this brings happiness to this person then i'm going to uh do good goal. deeds yeah. and it, it indeed does mm -hmm. she witnesses him even though she doesn't give it to the guy himself she is there as this guy is going over finding this thing. Mm -hmm. Like she places it in a location. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Oh yeah, was it booth. a phone booth? Yeah. And then she calls the phone booth or something mm -hmm. like that. The guy finds it yeah. and then goes to the cafe where Emily works, mm -hmm. right? And then he pops and, in, uh, opens just, it, just shares how it changed his life. And he realizes, like, he talks about how fast life changes. Uh, mm -hmm passes right mm -hmm. one minute you're a kid then you're next minute you're 50 mm -hmm. you don't have a relationship with your daughter mm -hmm. and you don't know your grandson and mm -hmm. so she's and so he's like this box made me feel like i have to get back in touch with yeah. my daughter and meet my grandson and mm -hmm. in the end he indeed does mm -hmm. so this is the thing that rejuvenates mm -hmm. um amelie yeah. and she makes that decision you know what i'm going to that's what i'm gonna do yeah she it, she basically got uh got a, a helper's high mm -hmm. from from witnessing this man yeah. and how the box impacts him. And mm -hmm. so then he, and so she sets out to do the same thing yeah. um, for other people. She does things like walking with an, an old, a blind guy. Mm -hmm. This is what you're seeing and tells the blind guy, this is what's going on. Yeah. There are fruits uh, on your left. Yeah. And Giving a lot of great details to yeah. kind of paint a picture for him, to yeah. give him a sight as it were, and to yeah. allow him to kind of see some beautiful things around him. And so, yeah. That's yeah, about it. That's the movie. The main things for me, a big one that I think the movie touches on a lot, is people's perceptions. 
And it, a lot of it deals with perception. So for instance, Amelie is the one person basically around her who has this childlike, imaginative, you know, very creative and kind of generally positive experience of life because that's just kind of how she perceives things. And maybe she's had to do that so that she didn't go crazy because she was so lonely, but that's how she sees the world. And she's generally in a good mood and she's, you know, always kind of more positive. And then everyone else is always, you know, getting at each other's throats and they're a lot more negative, right? So it's kind of their perceptions. And then their perceptions can easily change when she does something to kind of make them think back to when they were happier in life. The concierge of her building, she's very low and very negative because she found out that her husband left her for another woman in another continent. And at one point, Emily then uh, takes these old letters and switches the words around and then prints out so it makes it look like it's an original old letter that uh, never got husband, to the yeah. concierge. That the husband, sent, wrote, that the husband wrote to her to and, her and changed the letters around to say that he was still always in love with her. So now it's, it's changed the concierge's life and now she's in love again and she's a lot happier. So just that perception, that switch yeah. can, can change things around, right? And then you've got Joseph, the guy who goes in every day to the cafe and just records his ex mingling with other customers and he's in this mindset that he's got this bias where everything that his ex does is to get back at him despite him to flirt with other men that's yeah. his mindset and no matter what happens that will just feed his confirmation bias yeah and then at one point when amelie tries to kind of through you know uh some kind of uh, mental tactics manipulation get the other woman who's uh works there as well who's very lonely and gets her to yeah. hook up with uh joseph um which works for a little bit and they both kind of you know are generally in a better mood but then that falls apart again because i think they both haven't worked through their stuff so then joseph is now you know Doing thinking the that they're conspiring with each other and and now it's the same kind of bias that everyone's out to get him and to piss him off right yeah which they're not yeah but that's He's, he's, that's where he's at. Yeah, so, that's where he's at, and he's determined to see everything like that. Yeah, sometimes as a person, as an individual, if you make a resolution about something, no matter how untrue it is, you won't, and, and how much evidence of the invalidity of mm -hmm. your resolution you get, you're not going to see that. You will you will choose to be blind to it because you prefer to kind of settle in into your own convictions, no matter how wrong they may be, and mm -hmm. you don't want anybody to prove them wrong when you when you're in an uncertain emotional state you want to find certainty in a belief in something or a you know a reality to to ground yourself right yeah. so he has to have this complete certainty that these people are all out to get him or all women are out to make his life a living hell yeah, yeah. one of the customers in the, the regular is there in the cafe he's this writer mm -hmm. who he calls himself a failed writer right because he keeps getting rejected his writing mm -hmm. um keeps getting rejected and so he kind of eventually gets irritated with Joseph. I mean, he's always been, but then he, this is the first time he actually expresses his frustration. Mm -hmm. And then Joseph talks about, oh, well, you're a failure. So I don't know who you, you are to yeah. say anything, right? But then he's like, well, that's life. You know, life is full of failures and I'm okay with that. If the you need to start mm -hmm. getting used to it, mm -hmm. right? And and I think that's, that's the thing. Um, sometimes Joseph doesn't want to embrace the hardships and challenges of life number one but then also doesn't want to embrace the things that he may not like about himself mm -hmm. or failures that he may have experienced so instead of accepting the good along with the bad of who he is and of his experiences he chooses to live cynically mm -hmm. he chooses to basically pin the challenges that he experiences on other people mm -hmm. so maybe the fact that he's lonely Right. It's because of these women you yeah. see, they are asking all they, they're asking, they're throwing themselves at other men. Mm -hmm. They are not virtuous. And that's why they left me, mm -hmm. not because of me. Yeah. They didn't leave me because of me. They left me because they are just, yeah. they're women who, who are, mm -hmm. you know, instead of him changing himself because, you know, like, like, like to, he's such a, like, it's still in this suspicious paranoid state instead of getting out of that and maybe looking at life more supportively and positively and more accepting yeah. way, which would probably attract more people to him he instead stays in that state not realizing that's a repulsive state of mind it's yeah. going to keep people from you you know exactly i feel like the movie itself the idea of it is to show that how how good kindness being kind mm -hmm. to others can be mm -hmm. right emily is doing all of these 
good deeds for other people and bringing a lot of joy into their lives, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, the movie definitely tries to drive mm-hmm. that theme. Yeah. I like that, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I do like the fact of how much they highlight being good to other people. Yeah. However yeah. you treat other people, mm-hmm. It has a domino effect that can kind of like that extends beyond you and that person. Mm-hmm. And so when you're doing good or bad, you know, that's how much of an impact you can have. And mm-hmm. so that's something that I think is always important to reflect on when you are interacting with people. So for that, I really enjoyed the movie. I did feel, however, I have concerns. <laughs> <laughs> for, first of all, it's not. Yeah, there's there's a difference between being kind and i think how do i explain this i mean i think the one thing is it is kind of like a a fantasy thing and that it's a little unrealistic for her to be doing all this for everyone um and that it always does actually end up working out really well i think it's it's kind of like maybe not so much a a realistic thing but showing that good you know kindness begets more kindness and then positive ripple effects and then you know, negativity begets more negativity. That's why they get in the fight at the cafe at one point because they're both kind of giving in to trying to piss each other off. I think firstly, right? Yeah, kindness does not always beget positivity. True. That is a fact. Yeah. You can be good to someone yeah. and you can give to someone. You, you're you doing won't, this. You won't have any. In this movie, yeah. all the all the positive things, apart from trying to set up Georgette and Joseph, that's the only one that doesn't work out. All the other ones changes everyone's life immensely, which isn't really... Yeah, like for thing. exactly whatever goodness you're trying to impart onto the world isn't necessarily going to bear any fruit, um, positive fruit anyway. Mm-hmm. And especially when you do it the way that I think Emily was doing it. If you do something for someone by individually determining what it is that would be good mm-hmm. for this person, um, I think that becomes a problem. And I believe that that's where I have an issue with the movie. A lot of these good deeds are based on Emily's own determinations. Mm-hmm. That if I do this, this would be good for mm-hmm. this person, mm-hmm. right? I, I I still, I agree with your argument in terms of like, say, the concierge, where she's basically allowing her, the concierge, to live in this fantasy that her husband still loves her when he doesn't. So now she's, sure, she's happier, but she's living an illusion. And is that something you should have that's the power fair. to give to someone and put yeah. someone in? Yeah. And so that's the thing for me. Like, I think Emily is um, a very sweet person, truly. And I don't, I'm not like chastising her for trying to be good to people. Mm -hmm. But I'm just kind of unpacking the reality of kindness, right? As people, we sometimes believe we know what's what's better for Mm -hmm. other people. Because that's really what it is here. Mm -hmm. You know, you have this idea that this would be better Mm -hmm. for them. Like Mm -hmm. if they got together, both of them are lonely, Georgette and, and Joseph. And so if they got together, Joseph would stop obsessing over Mm -hmm. the other lady in the cafe and Georgette, you know, with her kind of like seeming mental issues around her Mm -hmm. real physical illnesses Mm -hmm. and how it's affecting her. Maybe that's going to end, but it doesn't really end at all. And it's basically back to square one because that wasn't the problem. Mm -hmm. And so you're not really, you're trying to be kind, but you're not actually targeting the thing where your kindness would actually, you know, garner the kind of results that you're hoping for. Mm -hmm. And that's because, again, you afforded these people support independently of their own needs. Mm -hmm. You didn't understand. You didn't ask for what the issues are. Mm -hmm. You don't even know these people really because all these people are here. But no one actually discusses um, their feelings or Mm -hmm. they're not really friends. They're not they don't meet outside of Mm -hmm. of the cafe at the end of the day. This kind of support that she extends, she's extending independent of actually knowing these people that she's trying to support Mm -hmm. and independent of knowing what their actual needs are. And even the ones that are positive, you know, that seem to actually be a triumph for her kindness. For example, Lucien, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She's helping this guy. He works, what, selling food? The boss is abusive and rude and insulting to the employee. Yeah. Yeah. And so then what she does is she starts basically... She, she gets revenge on the boss. Things like making, going into, breaking into um, his home and, you know, just doing a whole lot of stuff in his house and then he can't sleep, he's freaked out. The first time he then, the first time she does this, he then is too tired to work, which means Lucien is working on um, alone because mm-hmm. the boss is in the back sleeping. So he gets relief from the boss that one day. Mm-hmm. Um, but the boss is still there, you know, yeah. next time, st- still continues yeah. to do the same thing. Yeah. And so there's never yeah. really any resolution. Not, no systemic change. Yeah, there's no systemic change it's at just, all. It's just a day or two that makes her feel good and maybe makes them feel good temporarily, but yeah. it doesn't, it's not a permanent fix. It's not a permanent yeah. fix. And secondly... Whose issue is this? Is it Emily's issue or is Emily. it... Emily. Uh, 
Amelie. Is it Amelie's <laughs> issues or is it Lucien's <laughs> issue, yeah. right? It's, it's, it's his issue because, you know, think about it. If someone is getting uh, bullied mm-hmm. all the time, right? And maybe you stand up to the bully today. Mm-hmm. But are you going to show up every single day to stand up to the bully for this person? Mm -hmm. And shouldn't the person who's being bullied actually find a way to stand up for themselves? And if you stand up for them all the time, aren't you taking away their agency? Aren't you taking away their chance to grow and become stronger within themselves if you keep coming, swooping in as, you know, their hero? It's really very infantilizing when you think about it because you are making that decision that this person doesn't have the capacity to do what you are doing right which Mm -hmm. is fighting back Mm -hmm. i think at the end of the day there are some people who are at a certain point in their lives who can stand up for themselves maybe because they've they were just born like that or maybe because they had a lot of years of experiences that finally led them to a point where okay this is this is how i need to navigate the situation but if you're continuously giving that kind of support that emily is giving then you're never really Amelie's giving, baby, if you're giving the, extending the kind of support that <laughs> Amelie is, is, is to Lucienne, mm-hmm. it's, when you think about it, long term, it's not really going to be beneficial to Lucien, you know, because he never, you're never giving him the opportunity to, to learn how to stand up for himself. Mm-hmm. You, do you know what I mean? Oh, I feel you. I yeah. Feel you. And so those are little things that I was just kind of like, oh. Okay. You're right. It's got that kind of fantasy element that like, wouldn't it be nice if you just, you could just fix everyone around you who's so sad and glum all the time and you could actually really make, like turn their life around. Now, again, in reality, like you said, maybe that's not really up to you. And how do you know what's best for these people? But it is just kind of that. It's, it's like a kid's, it's almost like a, like a, like a cartoon in that way where it's just like, it's not really realistic, but it's kind of a nice fantasy to imagine you know yeah it definitely is a a kind of a nice fantasy to imagine and here's the thing right if you are out there in the big Mm -hmm. bad world thinking that i'm a cynic Mm -hmm. i am emily i have been (laughs) burned.com i have had friends in the past i remember my friend saying to me you are never happy unless people are living according to your own value system you have this idea of morality that you judge everybody your friends according to and I was like no it's not true I don't do that you know I absolutely don't I don't believe you know I th- you can do whatever you want to do and to a large degree I think I definitely am the kind of person who believes that people in general should be allowed to leave to lead lives according to their own moral yardstick or ideological yardstick whatever right and but I only I truly genuinely believe I'm at this point now only but before I was like Emily thinking that this ABC is good I, would, I thought this is good and yeah I want my friends to not do bad and I'm going to try as much as possible to steer them you know towards my you know like my thinking to to, to living the way that I think would be better for them. Mm-hmm. I, I literally would do that. As philanthropic as my motives were, um, as much as out of love they stem from, I do believe that we shouldn't, as people, meddle into people's lives. Even if they're going through hardships, those are their hardships to go through. And when you take away a person's experience, you take away their capacity to grow from it, their capacity to learn from it, and to become better for, from it. Because you're the one who's basically doing all the hard work. When you, as a person, are doing good deeds, like Emily is, are you doing it for those people or are you doing it for yourself? Because mm-hmm. it feels good to help other people. Mm-hmm. And if you're lonely, like Emily is, are you doing that because it gives you that fulfillment that you don't get because you're lonely in general? Well, maybe she won't do that anymore now that she met Nino, which was the the other thing I was going to talk about, is that, you know, she had a couple of relationships, but uh, they show that uh, it was not working out for her. And same thing with Nino. He goes from relationship to relationship. Because they're both very unique people. He was bullied at school. She was homeschooled. So they just withdrew and got very comfortable just being on their own. Which does make you a more unique person. Because you're just, you get into your own things independent of what the fashion or the trends are. So you, yeah, you just, and then it makes it harder and harder to uh, get along with people that are a lot more tapped into what's going on in the world. But then they, they finally meet and 
as she says, as she uses the the painting that her neighbor is working on. I think it's a Renoir, Renoir. painting, yeah. and she they basically are talking about Amelie's situation through the the girl in the painting, mm -hmm. and uh, she's talking about how she's you know maybe she looks kind of alone in that painting because maybe she's thinking about someone who's not there, someone that she has a natural affinity for, who's this guy that he fi that she finds out has a lot of similar or just his own kind of quirks that she finds this similar connection to because she has those things and then she hadn't met anyone that was like that before and then so you know she finds herself her heart enamored starts yeah, by enamored this by this man. guy yeah, yeah for the first time ever she f feels that because before it just kind of felt like oh maybe she just isn't someone that needs to be in relationships or needs that but then once you meet that person that does give you that that feeling of wholeness or understanding or that kindred spirit then yeah. the the feelings come back the uh the the need to want to be with that person or the you know that's kind of the thing is that i feel with with people that are looking for relationships it's like you know try and figure out it's hard obviously find some time set some time aside to really do some deep dive and i think into who you are and i think it's important then to find someone like that and there always is some going to be someone that's like you you know no yeah. matter how different or weird or unique you think you are there's someone else like you yeah. um, you're not special in that case and that there are millions of billions of people other people have had similar lives uh, lives so but it's important i think to have that similarity that understanding will really help with that natural affinity and being drawn to that other person so that felt very realistic to me so that's like the more realistic part of the movie is that she needed to find someone that was like her yeah, you know. Can I, I, I want to well, add you something. You are going to be so late. It's fine, you. I'll be late. I, I'm already late. <laughs> that relationship with her and the, the old man as well, who keeps painting this mm -hmm. one Renoir painting, that was really great because they never really, he's, he's very gentle with her. I like that mm -hmm. because she's very scared of her own feelings and she doesn't really know how to face them. And so he uses this painting to actually yeah. um, have them talk about talk her about issues. Her issues. Without... Yeah, without actually talking yeah. about her is issues. Yeah. And so for, there's a girl in the painting, right? And she and he's looking at this girl and, you know, and she's and he's like, this girl is surrounded by all of these people, but she's always seen. She always seems so incredibly lonely, you know, and then Amelie's like, well, you know, maybe she's kind of she's lonely because she's basically pining for someone who isn't there. And then he, he's kind of like, well, I mean, if he if, if she's interested in, in, in that someone, then he she should probably you know, pursue him mm -hmm. or something like that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and that's basically something that she kind of, I don't think it she realized. It helps her think about this because it's not targeted directly at her. Yeah. It's a little easier for her to digest, which yeah. is kind of a, kind of doing like therapy in a way. I definitely felt very endeared to Amelie with her reality of being this really sweet, kind person who doesn't really have the kind of affection I think she longed for. And then in the end, when she gets together with Nino or, or finds Nino, I, I felt that was such a beautiful moment for me because of course, then she then realizes herself. She starts seeing herself and starts servicing her own needs. And then them coming together was just kind of the cherry on top for me. And I really would hope that you know, it's just one of those things that you hope for, for people in life. Mm -hmm. Of course, at the end of the day, it's a movie, so it doesn't really show you the extent to which as a person you have to work your butt off to actually get to the point of finding the fulfilling relationships that are really, truly hard to find. But um, I think it was just one of those things for me, one of those movies for me that remind me of the fact that just because things are a certain way right now doesn't mean that they won't be in, in, fu in future. Mm -hmm. And there will always be that one person or those people that find that you find that give you what you need to get to that point of happiness that you are looking for or didn't even know that you wanted you know overall um that's what that movie gave me and and it was really sweet yeah what, what would you guys think about what we had to say about emily what we took from that yeah, yeah please did we miss anything yeah please yeah. comment yeah uh down below and share your thoughts on our thoughts mm -hmm. yeah but uh yeah until next time bye, bye.